Today we're talking about, not JavaScript, thank God. We're talking about terminals and Zig and TUIs specifically. TUIs, I should say. Uh, okay, so what is a TUI? A TUI is a terminal UI. So um, libvaxis is this fantastic library that I found. And uh, if you've been watching some of the streams, you've seen me working with this a little bit, but I just wanna make an actual video to talk about it today because I have learned to love it. It's very, very nice. So this is a modern TUI library written in Zig. So this is sort of comparable, comparable, if you will, to um, Charm's uh, Bubble T. I think Charm Bracelet's Bubble T. Um, Bubble T is a little more full-fledged at this point, but um, Bubble T's in Go. And I don't want to write Go. I want to write Zig. So uh, I found this library, figured I would try it out. Um, it works pretty great. So there's some information on it here. Uh, one of the key things that I really want to point out is that there's essentially two layers to this. There's V-axis and there's VXFW, which is the V-axis framework. Originally, I planned on using this, but the table widgets that I wanted to build don't support the framework at this point. So instead, I had to wire it all up the hard way, and honestly, the hard way was not that hard. Uh, one thing that calls out to me, it provides a Flutter-like style of API. This is pretty true. Uh, this is pretty easy to work with, and I've got... Pfft, too many years of Flutter experience at this point. So I am I feel comfortable working in this. It's like Flutter meets Zig, and that's a pretty happy time for me. So we'll look at some code here in just a second, but I just wanted to call out that this is the library, uh, libvaxis. It's really, really nice. The VXFW stuff is super easy to work with. Manually wiring things up without the framework, really not as bad as it would seem. Uh, this looks like a lot of code. If you read through it, you'll realize it's not too much, and I'll show you some code from uh, me using the low-level API with a TUI here to make a table. Um, yeah, so information on the low-level API here. One thing that's really nice about it before we dive in, they have some examples up here. Highly recommend cloning the repo, trying out these examples. Our table is a derivative of this table example with a couple different things changed and a couple bells and whistles uh, added and or removed. And um, yeah, it turns out it works out pretty nice. So um, let's get to it. So I've got a project over here. Let me just close this for now. Uh, this is a project I've been working on on stream for a bit. It's called Book. And what it lets you do is you can do stuff like this. Um, and it holds bookmarks for you. So one of the cool things is that if I pull up a browser to make sure that this is the browser it goes to, I can actually run GH and it will open GitHub for me or I could run X and it'll open X for me. Um, these are interesting examples. It might be more useful if you were to use this at work and you have like uh, GCP, a specific um, region set up and a specific kube namespace that you commonly go to. You could put all of that in book as well and then have a nice terminal based bookmark to get you there. Uh, one of the other things that's really interesting is this DL. This goes to my downloads. This is a not a URL, it's a local file. So what happens there? I can do zig build run DL and it will open using whatever you have available on your system uh, set as the default to that path so you can do things. So I can go into downloads and I do have a small bug with this at the moment where if I close that window, um, the process still hangs. It's not executing uh, successfully. Um, in that case, so that's something to fix, but that's not what we're talking about today. Today, we're gonna talk about this, the TUI version. So this is what I have set up so far. Um, you saw me opening bookmarks. I can't do that from here. I'd like to be able to do that. So that's what we're gonna implement today. And we're gonna take a little bit of time to talk about how this works currently. So there's really, there's a couple files here. The only two that are relevant for this are our main.go or sorry, main.zig, uh, which is what we're in right now, and um, our tui.zig, which we'll get to in just a second. So there's a couple different things going on here. Here's our main method. We have some writers, some handles on them. Uh, we get a bookmark file using uh, an allocator and a paths zig file that I have that helps look up where the bookmark file should be. Um, and then specifically, we use bookmark search with an empty query, so it returns everything to get all the bookmarks and then we turn them into a multi-array list. Someone pointed out that this probably isn't necessary, and I think it is not. I, I've validated that it's not, in fact, but I haven't refactored away from it yet. And then uh, we create that multi-array list, and then we call tui.launch. 
So tui.launch takes us into our tui.zig, and you can see here there's a struct for a bookmark. We do some translation between our actual data model and a uh, view model here, essentially. So the bookmark in tui is different than the bookmark in the rest of the application, um, mostly because the table struggles to render uh, a slice of slice. Um, so in our case, we just have uh, a slice of const u8 here and not like nested slices. So here's that launch method that we were talking about. It takes in an allocator and it takes in a uh, multi-array list for now. We have a buffer that we use to initialize a TTY interface. We deferred deinitializing that. We get a handle on the writer. Here's some zig 0151 isms that we're working with. But a nice thing about this and pointing this out is that this library is totally ready for zig 0151 uh, and is really nice to use. Okay, so we call vaxis init to get our, uh, well, our vaxis instance. I've referred to this as vx in our case, and we deinitialize it um, in a defer shortly after. We create a vaxis loop, and we're handling a couple different things that we care about. So we have key press, window resizing, and then table update. So these are the methods that can essentially be triggered in our loop. Um, what else? We're initializing our loop, we're starting it, we're deferring, stopping it. We are entering the alt screen and then we're querying our terminal. Um, so you can see here, we're setting up a query with you know a timeout. Uh, we can get into our command input, uh, which I actually don't remember if I'm using. Yeah, I'm not. Okay, so this is unnecessary at this point. Um, sorry, a little ahead of myself. This will be used for search when we get to that point, but that probably won't be in this video. Uh, but the idea here is essentially being able to search or filter rather your table down to certain things. There's some colors that we set up to highlight the cells. You saw that in the Tui example, there's a couple different backgrounds and cell colors that we're working with. And then um, we have our header names here where we set up our custom names. So value, path, and tags in our case. Uh, setting up our column indexes, so we're able to map the um, values in our multi-array list to different column indexes using this. And then we are um, deferring, just, just freeing a little bit of space uh, when we're done using, using that space, using that memory. We set up an arena allocator, and we're using that arena allocator on our loop here. So we have a while true. And we are using this really nice reset method on the arena to retain the capacity. So essentially freeing all the memory without resizing the capacity, no extra calls um, out, no extra sys calls out to handle uh, like, well, resizing the capacity for that matter. Um, some flushing here. I don't think this is probably the right pattern for what it's worth. I've, I've come to change my mind on deferring flushing, um, but again, maybe a topic for another video or something for me to fix right after this video. Uh, we get access to our allocator and then we grab our next event. So here's really the meat and potatoes of all this, right? So we check different key presses. We have some uh, Vim key bindings here, so you can go up and down with JK. You can go left and right with H and L respectively. Um, and then for space, um, what am I doing with space? I actually don't remember what I've set up with space. We should try that out too. I don't think I have anything working at this point, but what we want to do is essentially add a new key bind. Um, and we'll do that right here in just a minute. Looking at the rest of this, we get an access or we get a, a handle to the window. We clear the window and then we set up a child on the window, which is going to be our table. Um, you can see, let's see. You can see here that as long as we have more than uh, zero bookmarks, then we're actually drawing that table, and then we are rendering that with VX, passing in the TTY writer. That's really it. That's 100 lines, 123 lines of code to show what we have today with that TUI, which is pretty cool. But what I really want to do is add support for another key binding. So we're going to do that instead. So I'm going to come down here and say if key.matches, this will actually be pretty similar to what we have above. So it'll be vaxis.key.enter. Yep, that looks good. That looks good. Thank you. Um, let me just copilot disable. Sorry, sometimes that gets in the way, especially with video recording, and I know it can be confusing having that stuff pop up. Okay, 
So uh, essentially we want to get the selected value. So we can do something like const selected is equal to um, if demo table dot select rows, something like rows else. Uh, I need to come up with the appropriate type here. So something like this, u16 demo table dot row, I think should work. And then we can do something like um, for selected. And one of the nice things about this is if you select multiple, it'll open multiple, which I'm pretty excited about. We can do something like take the selected, ooh, selected index, get demonetized real quick for that. Uh, and then we want to get the bookmark from our bookmarks multi array list. So we can do bookmarks dot get, and then we want to pass in the selected index like so. And then finally, I want to leverage browser dot open external, and I want the bookmark dot path. So browser is, um, what did I do wrong here? Oh, I see what I did wrong. We're missing rows. So browser is this uh, second or third in this case file that I have written in Zig. Um, there's not a ton going on here. There's one method called open external. This open external is used to open external processes and it tries to figure out the right way to open them, whether that's your file picker or your browser or whatever the uh, tool is. So we can build this out with more protocols or file types and um, essentially support more options in the future, which I'm pretty excited about. For now, let's go back to TUI.zig. So uh, we need to import browser. So we can come up here, const browser is equal to import something like dot slash browser.zig should take care of it. Now, if we come back here, we can zig build run, give us that TUI. We can go up, we can go down. If I hit enter, it opens our um, downloads in this case, which is what we told it to open. Again, I do think I have that. Yeah, I definitely have that bug where the process has run away since I've closed it um, via <laughs> the downloads. Interesting. I will really have to fix that. Let's try again with something like X. Uh, that, hmm, uh, it opened. It opened on a different browser, so you're not able to see that. So let's fix that right quick. That should give browser focus there, which looks good. We should be able to open GitHub as well. Looks good. And yeah, now we have interactivity in our table. This is coming along, and I think next we'll have searching and a couple other things, and then I'll be ready to publish. Actually, I probably should publish a new release before that, but ready to publish a release and embed this into my Omarky Linux setup as a TUI that hopefully I will use day in and day out. Uh, different call to action this time. I'd love it if you wanted to contribute to this. I've got a couple issues. Uh, it's a Hacktoberfest repo, so if you are working on your Hacktoberfest open source contributions, you can get them working on this as well. Uh, so it is github.com slash bradcypert slash book. If you want to work on it, let me know. Um, there's plenty to do and I can file more issues as we need them. I've got a lot up here and I know that's not super helpful, but if I have people who are interested in participating, I will take them from here and put them over here. Uh, besides that, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, consider joining our discord in the description below. And um, yeah, like the video. Cool people like the video and you are one of the coolest people I know. All right, thanks and have a great day.